Hi, welcome to another episode of the Carolyn Glick Show. I'm recording this show on Tuesday, January 10th, and on January 9th, former Defense Minister Benny Gantz, the head of the uh, government party or something, I can never figure out how to uh, ha- how to translate his, his name, but whatever, his regal party, he said that uh, if there's a civil war in Israel, it'll be Netanyahu's fault. Uh, Gantz's strange statement about civil war came on the heels of other statements by former Supreme Court President Aaron Barak in a spate of interviews over the weekend where he referred to Netanyahu as Caesar, and uh, he said that he would be willing to take a bullet to prevent the judicial reform that the Netanyahu government announced through Justice Minister Yariv Levine last week. Um, Lapid uh, Yair Lapid, opposition leader, former uh, acting prime minister, as well as uh, Gantz, labor head, Merav Mikhaeli, and others of their uh, coalition of opposition lawmakers announced yesterday as well that they were all going to take to the streets on Saturday night to protest against the government's policies. All of these actions where they're calling for a civil war, saying it'll be the other side's fault if there's a civil war, are all taking place uh, with the active support of most outlets of the Israeli media, which are very far to the left. Yesterday, all of the major uh, news programs opened with these dark headlines about the end of democracy because National Security Minister Itamar Ben-Gvir announced yesterday that he was ordering the police to use a, a uniform policy for quelling illegal protests, re- regardless of the ideological uh, color of uh, whoever the protesters are. So whether they're Arabs, whether they're on the right, whether they're on the left, whether they're uh, uh, people who are uh, physically impaired, whoever it happens to be, if they block highway arteries, they should get the same treatment is what he said. And um, the media immediately distorted what he said and said, oh, he's calling for a civil war against left-wingers, which of course is not what happened. So we're, we're seeing this pile on by the left and the media in politics and the Supreme Court retired justices saying that Israeli democracy is over because the duly constituted Knesset and government want to enact uh, judicial reform. And I could think of nobody better to talk about these issues with uh, than uh, with former and incoming Likud member of Knesset, Amit Halevi. And I'll tell you a little bit about Amit, but first I just want to welcome Amit to the studio. Thanks so Hi. much for coming in. Hi, Caroline. Great, great to honor have. to be here with you. Well, it's great. It's great. It's a great uh, privilege for me because uh, just in, in like the next couple of days, you're going to be inducted into the Knesset, so you won't be available to come talk to your old pal Carolyn so much anymore. <laughs> okay, no, no. I'm sure there will be more opportunities for this kind of conversation in this uh, uh, in here in this uh, site, very important site, by the way. Yeah, in my has. eyes. So uh, I'm here. All right. Well, I'm so glad to have you on the program today. So first, before I start asking you questions, I want to tell you guys a little bit about Amit Halevi. I've known Amit for many years. Um, He entered the Knesset for the first time in 2020, I think, right? Um, And uh, he's the representative of Jerusalem in the Likud Knesset list. And uh, so with the uh, imminent resignation of Diaspora Affairs uh, Minister uh, uh, Amichai Shikli, Amit Levy is the next person on the Likud list, so he'll be moving in to uh, take that empty spot in the Knesset. Um, but Amit's a really sort of an interesting character. You, you grew up uh, in the religious Zionist uh, community. Uh, you studied at the flagship yeshiva of the uh, religious mm-hmm. Zionist uh, community for 10 years, Merkaz Arav. Mm-hmm. Uh, you served in the tank corps. And I know you because um, it's like, when was it you founded? Maybe 15 years ago? The, yeah the Israeli College for Statesmanship and Diplomacy, if I'm uh, not saying, is that the, yeah, the formal, formal name? name? is the, the Jewish Statesmanship Center, Okay. which we uh, actually established because of uh, what we see in Israel, but not, you know, not recently since, if we want Forever. to be exact, so <laughs> it's 1st of, the, the, the of April 1925, I mean, the establishment of the Hebrew U, and uh, since then, actually, the intellectual elite in Israel set the terms, the ideas, and uh, then the policy, of course. I mean, uh, if you want to be the CEO of, uh, you know, Prime Minister office, you learn uh, law and uh, economy in the Hebrew U. And this is exactly the time when young people in Israel, by the way, all over the world, set their, you know, their consciousness, build their uh, uh, internal uh, values and, mm-hmm. and way of thinking and thoughts. 
And uh, unfortunately, in Israel, there there's, was not for many years, there was not a, you know, intellectual alternative way of thinking and uh, a different view on the, on the main uh, issues uh, politically. I'm not talking about uh, uh, natural science. Yes, we're talking about uh, humanities. And social and, sciences. And social sciences. So that's what we're doing, actually. It's a leadership it's a school. It's a leadership school, actually. We turn to uh, uh, outstanding students that uh, aim to be in influential positions in the future. And they're coming for, uh, you know, there's the basis one year, very intensive year uh, in the center. And then we uh, promote them and nourish them over the years uh, uh, in the future, in their positions, we have more than 400 wonderful alumni, as you mentioned, Amichai Shikli, that uh, really uh, 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 did this step that, uh, to, to let me in, uh, to be in, in the Knesset, but uh, he also one of our wonderful graduates, uh, graduates exactly. So, uh, and then other Knesset member, by the way, Dan Ilus, also uh, one of our graduates. So we will be three in this Knesset. Uh, uh, so... Uh, uh, this is the center, very important center, by the way, for the future leadership. Of so Israel. wait, wait, give me the formal t name again. The Jewish Statesmanship Center mm -hmm. so in the Jerusalem. Jew so just so you guys know, so this is how I know Amita Levy, because he and Asaf Malach, who co-founded the uh, the center with you, uh, you know, they've had me speak to their students several times, and I have to say, the students are so keen to learn. This is. To be clear, these are students who who do the leadership course mm -hmm. with your with your institute while they're full time students. So they're getting uh, BAs or masters uh, in social science, usually uh, subjects or the humanities subjects, and so they're getting brainwashed. They're paying to be brainwashed basically at the universities, and then once a week. They devote themselves to expanding their knowledge by participating in your program. Uh, just, I think, a month or so ago, they had me do a debate with uh, former Foreign Ministry uh, Director General Alon Liel, who is, uh, I think he would probably not object if I said that he was an anti-Zionist at this point, and he goes around the world lobbying foreign governments to recognize the state of Palestine. And we had a mm -hmm. very lively debate. Mm -hmm. And whereas in Hebrew University, they're happy to invite uh, a lonely elder speak. I have, I maybe I missed the invitations that I received to uh, speak at their seminars. Yeah. So, it 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 it's, provides it, the students with uh, a much more expansive knowledge base to go forward in the definitely, world. Definitely, definitely. So, I mean, there are two problems in the in our academic uh, uh, world and, and climate. First of all, that they have only one sided uh, orientation. I mean, they they uh, are exposed. The students exposed only to. A very very specific and uh, narrow uh, way of thinking, m mostly leftist, as you as, as you mentioned, and 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 more than that, you know, in general, the academic world is very flat. I mean, you need in-depth perspective and knowledge in order to be in the front line of Israel. That's you true. cannot be, uh, uh, you know, you, people don't know history. They even they finish, you know, economy student. Let's talk about economy. Three years, they are graduates of three years, and you ask them, are you capitalist? Are you socialist? In what way? In which things or uh, areas you think the state should be involved? In which they need to be, they really should be a free market? I said, oh, well, we didn't think about it. So we need a serious. Uh, 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 promo we need to, to, to do a serious promotion and, and a place that will be and that's what we're doing in the center and one more thing this year since uh, you know uh, several months we have also very important program for high-ranking officers in the IDF that are coming to the center once a week you know all over the years there were Mandel program Wexner program this is what we know all over the years and from this year in the Jewish Statue Center every week we have dozens of very, uh, uh, as I said, influential positions, uh, uh, officers in the army that are coming to our center and get a different perspective about, it's called the Zionist leadership. It's on the table. I mean, we want that those people will have a Zionist perspectives. And Zionism is not, uh, you know, in the library on the, on the shelf. It's, it's a matter of policy. Yes, you need to translate it to policy. And that's what we're doing. It's really a very important thing. It's so important because the truth is, and we see it in all the polls, that the vast majority of Israelis are Zionists. But you go into the academic, you go into ac the the academia, and what you're being, um, in what what your professors and are are insisting that you pare it back are 
are positions that are antithetical to your worldview and also to the national interests of the country. So it, these kinds of programs are, are, are necessary mm -hmm. and it's shameful that they're necessary. And in just a bit, we're also gonna talk about what, what this government and what the Knesset mm -hmm. might be able to do to make these kinds of uh, programs less imperative you know, mm -hmm. less less necessary than they are today. But I, I wanted to actually mm -hmm. circle back for a second to the whole issue of judicial reform because you've also been involved in this issue for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, do you want to just summarize a little bit what the reforms are that are on the table? And then we want to take a step back and think about them yes. a little bit more deeply. Let's talk about the, the, the core issue here. Yes, you mentioned in the introduction that... Uh, they called uh, Netanyahu a Caesar. So, right. wh so who's the Caesar right. in Israel in the last 25 years? I mean, I wrote Barack. In a, uh, <laughs> so we are here in democracy, as the Greeks said, you know, demoskratos, shilton uh, yeah, the, the, the people should take over the country, should rule the country, should rule, exactly. And what happened? We're the sovereign. The, well, the exactly. public is the sovereign. The, exactly. Voters are the sovereign in exactly. a parliamentary and, democracy. And, and now this is what 300 years in the academy, when we're talking about political science, that's what we are talking right. about. I mean, and, and in the uh, last uh, 25, 30 years uh, in Israel, a uh, very bad thing uh, uh, happened. Actually, more and more um, powerful uh, positions. I'm talking about the Supreme Court. We're talking about the judicial system in general. I mean, yeah. the, the, the attorney, attorney general, general all, the state prosecution. Uh, exactly. So all those places actually without any, uh, you know, um, I need to make an apologize on behalf of my English teacher. Now, she was good. <laughs> but I loved also no, but the, the whole, basketball. But the, but but the I'm legislative talking about process. The, yes, yes. All the, no, no, but the, the, the more and more, uh, without some chut chukit, I meant. Without, right, without legal, without a legal basis, basically. Okay. Let, why don't you let me exactly. summarize for a second okay, in my English? So okay. what's happened over the past uh, generation, and we've talked about this repeatedly in this program. We had the uh, we had the debate a few year, a few weeks ago between Professor uh, Alan Dershowitz and Avi Bell mm -hmm. on the proposed judicial reforms before they were even formally proposed. So basically the idea, not the idea, the, the, the reality in Israel is that we have un- elected and often self-appointed justices and uh, government lawyers, the government attorneys, the attorney general, his uh, his deputies and the state prosecutors who all have this inside baseball kind of old guys network, get to promote one another and one another's kids actually. And they have this very incestuous situation where they all are uniform ideologically. They're very far to the left. And they keep seizing more and more powers from Israel's elected leaders, from the government and from the Knesset, uh, the power to, to, to dictate what policies are allowed to be. And this goes mm -hmm. back to academia, really, right? That if in academia, the bounds of what you're allowed to discuss and what you're allowed to study are dictated by the left. And mm -hmm. as a result, they reflect a very narrow perspective on reality. So then they go forward and they, in the legal fraternity as well, they say, you know, acceptable positions are from the left to the radical left. Definitely. But, you know, I think that if I was in the left, the basis of democracy, I mean, whether we are in the left or on the right, right, you want the people who will be the sovereign, as you said before. I mean, the the fact that in the theory, well, in, yeah, <laughs> the fact that the attorney general, without any legal basis, take to himself the authority to say what's right, what's wrong. By the way, there were three uh, uh, governmental committees that sit uh, that sat. I mean, on this subject and and made the decisions. I mean, they said it's you know it's. On the table, the attorney general, if he says something against the government, uh, governmental decision, so he's not allowed. He's only... Uh, uh, he doesn't have the power yeah, to overturn uh, governmental yes, decisions. Yes, he's not the decision maker. He right. has he's only make the... the, the opinion. The, his opinion, but not more than that. But again and again, now it's, you know, it's a double act. I mean, from the Supreme Court, they give what we call in Hebrew, I mean, it's like... They're, they're they, legislating from the bench. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. From the bench of the court mm -hmm. without any legal basis. Now, why it's so dangerous? Because we're... Wait, that's on one side. What's on the other side? The Attorney General dictating what policy the, can be. Uh, yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. This There is a, a document from January or March, uh, uh, March 2016. Mm -hmm. the, the Attorney General 
published uh, the uh, attorney general uh, document. I mean, all the like, all the rules how things can should work in the government. And then he said the attorney general can said what's wrong, what can be and what cannot be in the government. What decision can be uh, applied and what can now who give you. The right to do that. The right to do it. I mean, wh what is the legal basis? When you lose, when a society lose, the, the, it's become a jungle. I mean, when everybody can do whatever you want without legal basis, this is the end of, the, uh, of a free society. Of the rule of law. I mean, so what we say that in democracy, always in the head of the pyramid will be the people. Mm -hmm. In the head of the, as Lincoln, yes, democracy for the people. Of the people, by the, the people, people, and for the people. Exactly. Right. So, so this is the, the whole issue in Israel, and it's become a very dangerous uh, uh, situation when a few people, three, nine, fifteen, uh, in, uh, the court. in the court, can make the decisions for ten million people. This is not democracy. This is not enlightenment. It's the opposite. Right. Enlightenment said that every people. This is the real achievement, the major achievement of the modern world. Liberty. I mean, the fact that we are not obligated to, we are not, uh, we don't have to do what the king, because of his big uh, sword or because of his power. No, there are notes. As Yariv Levin, by the way, defined very well. He said to Aaron Barak, "I'm my reform is not of, on uh, on the base of the tanks." As Aaron Barak, right? So wait, 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 wait. Say, we're, we're jumping yeah. forward because people okay. don't know what Yariv Levin said. So okay. last Thursday night, I think it was mm -hmm. Yariv Levin, the Justice Minister. He put forward finally, much awaited, what he called stage one of uh, the, the legal judicial. reform, legal. and it it includes some key paragraphs. The first one is we're gonna. Uh, change the way that Supreme Court justices are chosen. Israel mm -hmm. has this really weird mm -hmm. uh, uh, committee uh, plan, which is that justices and uh, district judges and magistrate court judges are all chosen by mm -hmm. a committee. And the committee, until now, has how many members? The, the fact, the, the important fact is, is the public representatives is, uh, is the minority. Is no, the minority, this is it. Right, so the, the, and, the people who have the majority in this are, are unelected Supreme, people, unelected Supreme people. Court justices right. and representatives of the Bar Association, mm -hmm. who of course have to appear before mm -hmm. the court. So we're talking about we're talking about a ridiculous committee where mm -hmm. the judges get to essentially decide who gets to be a judge in Israel, and mm -hmm. the politicians are mere uh, sidekicks along for the ride, but they don't actually get to decide who's going to mm -hmm. be adjudicating. And as the judges take more and more power from the from the elected yes. officials who becomes the next judges of the Supreme Court become more and more important mm -hmm. because they're the ones who essentially hold more than that the they keys. have a veto because you need uh, uh, you need to have uh, seven out of nine in order to in order to appoint a, a Supreme Court judge so if you have three uh, judges judges from the Supreme Court so actually they have a veto of uh, of, of five of no of all the appointments oh all. of all the appointments yes, because, because you, only, need, you need since seven. Friedman reform you need seven in order to appoint a, a, a judge and not a regular to the Supreme Court to the Supreme Court we are talking about all of the Supreme Court yes I mean uh, these judges is, this uh, committee is for all uh, judges but for all courts sorry but uh, for the so Supreme even Court. if they get the the bar association members to vote with the government yes. against the wishes of the judges yes. the can, judges still get to uh, still have block a veto. The yes they can block it and uh, one of the changes will be also to 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 change this uh, veto of the Supreme Court and again why in every democracy wait 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 so the point though of the reform is to give uh, the elected officials on the committee the majority exactly. so it changes the balance of power it takes exactly. out the uh, the bar association representatives brings in, in, public, in representatives, representatives of the public yes. of the public that will be appointed by the justice minister by the exactly so that that changes the balance of the power yes. which means that which elected means, officials which means that Israel is come uh, comes back to be a democracy mm -hmm. a classical democracy as the United States. Well, not so States. far. This is just one step. That yeah. wouldn't be right, sufficient. Right, right. But right. we need to say here, besides three uh, uh, modern uh, states, in all over the countries, all over the states, this is the status. Right. I mean, the uh, Supreme Court judges are being elected by the public right. in different, in various uh, methods. But the bottom line, 
in, a, in the United States, by the in way, Senate. in many in of terms. the of the more court, yes, but you know, I'm talking about the also about the Supreme Court in the states. I mean, right, not, so not the, the federal. So they right. they're doing it. I think in, in the 16, 50 states. In 16, I think it's in ballots. I mean, they go to the oh, they to, actually to vote. vote. Yes, mm -hmm. they actually vote. The citizens vote. Yes, and why is that? Because we we white democracies are. Uh, 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 acting in this way because they don't want that the minority will uh, control uh, the will, court. Will, will, will take over the country. We prefer the majority. We prefer the democracy because you know there is a campaign now. Ah, well, the nine people we drop the the gingy, as we say in Israel, we drop the tenth people to the to the sea. Yes, the real problem in the history that one. Drop the night. That's what's happening in Israel. In, in the well, election. actually, what's One happening? We do have a. We do have. Uh, we do have the persecution of minorities. It's just that they're the exact opposite minorities of what the Supreme Court justice say. I mean, you had in Gush Katif, you had a huh. minority, right? All of the all of the Israelis who lived in Gaza <coughs> were an unprotected minority, and the Supreme Court joined with the tyranny of the majority of mm -hmm. the Supreme of, of the Sharon government and pushed all of these people out of their homes without any care for their civil rights yeah. or for their right to due process. Yeah, and when it was a very, uh, <coughs> you know, you say majority, we had a, uh, we had a, um, Michel Am, we had a... We had a referendum inside a referendum of the referendum and, uh, it, uh, you know, our Sharon took the paper uh, and dropped it to the, to the garbage and nobody said nothing. We right. didn't hear the Supreme Court uh, uh, president then, by the way, Aaron Barak. And uh, so... We right, saw so, them when they So won. that's the first one is to change mm -hmm. the, the composition of the Judicial Selection Committee. Mm -hmm. And then you have another one, which I think is even more urgent, not more important, which is that the legal advisors to all of the government ministries gets to be appointed Trust. by the actual minister. Because mm -hmm. what happens now is, again, they're selected by a committee of their peers, mm -hmm. meaning that they don't owe any allegiance to the actual ministers who they're supposed to be reporting to. And so you have these crazy situations where, you know, they're basically all under the attorney general who himself is under the Supreme Court because the Supreme Court runs a committee that chooses who can be an attorney general in Israel. So the whole situation is completely out of whack. And this law will, this uh, amendment to the existing law will allow legal advisors to be appointed by the ministers they are ostensibly mm -hmm. serving and um a, and uh and what was the other thing um and, the, and oh and the, under and subserve and and subordinate to them that they don't get to dictate the policies of the ministry mm -hmm. by saying mm -hmm. what i say goes cool. right yes yes i i hope that the audience that uh, you know Look at us now. Understand what we are talking because that's, that's it's insane. It's, it's obvious things. Yes, insane because uh, uh, legal advice. Uh, uh, by the way, it's, it's not only legal advisors. It should be all the policy positions, right. like in Washington. Right. I mean that every you know every elections when the Republican or the Democrats have been elected. So four thousand, five thousand people, you know, go home and and uh, uh, other people uh, take their positions. Right. This is democracy. I mean, a minister was elected by the people, for the people, as you mentioned, to do the policy that he was elected for. He needs his people. It's classical. To enact it. It's, right. Yes, to, to, to implement the, 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 the values that he, that he presented to the public. And, you know, after, after four years, the people can say, we don't want you and we will uh, place you in a different view or in different people. That's okay. This is democracy. I mean, the people every year, every four, year, every elections, we are actually, uh, you know, th this is the system. This turnover. And, you have to have turnover. Yes, right. exactly. And uh, that those are reforms are, uh, uh, the headline of those reforms are not to uh, destroy it as the current campaign, but to build. We want a vibrant democracy, all the campaign that people hear, you no know, human rights, it's all nonsense, just nonsense. Yes, uh, they, the only problem of Aaron Barak that he took the decisions, he took the decisions in Israel. He took over Israel over the years. He was the Caesar. And what we want that the people will be the. the no, servant. I know and the is projection is so crazy. I, I, everything that they're accusing uh, the Netanyahu government of doing 
are things that they've already done. And, mm -hmm. you know, our own Barack's incendiary interviews with uh, Channel 11, 12, and 13, the only one he wouldn't talk mm -hmm. to, Channel 14, because it's actually uh, uh, supportive of the government. Uh, so he wouldn't want to talk to them. So he gave three interviews Friday morning. Mm -hmm. They're all run uh, together on Saturday night. And in all of them, he says that uh, we have to man the barricades and uh, everybody should be out in force protesting against this because this will be the death of democracy, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. When what he did was he absconded of all of the powers of our of our lawfully elected uh, uh, representatives in the Knesset and in the government to himself and said that any attempt to take back the powers that he stole mm -hmm. with no legal basis means the death of democracy. And then we have this whole protean chorus of American uh, progressive Jewish organizations and others oh. saying that they oppose the destruction of, of of democracy in Israel and if these legal reforms mm -hmm. go ahead. But, but wait, before we go to that, so we have the legal advisors, we have the Supreme Court, uh, selection and process the, and we, what and else? We, and we have the, uh, what we call here Piscata et Gabrut, I mean to override. An uh, override the, of the Supreme Court's decision, over, yes. uh, if, decisions. If, uh, no, to if, abrogate laws. Yes, exactly. So uh, if the Supreme Court actually uh, uh, cancel uh, 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 the legislation of the Knesset, of the, of the Parliament, so we can override him. Uh, with this uh, override uh, law, new, uh, it's not a new thing in Israel, by the way. There is already in, the, in our uh, uh, law uh, there is uh, the, this kind of thing. But again, I, I'm, I'm, I don't support it so much, actually, because this override law actually uh, give the uh, admit that the Supreme Court has a power. Right, because that's one of the crazy things, right? Mm -hmm. Is that the Supreme Court does not have the power under law, right, mm -hmm. to to abrogate duly promulgated laws of the Knesset. Exactly. And Aaron Barak stole this. He did it the first time when a week after Yitzhak Rabin's mm -hmm. assassination, when absolutely everybody in the country mm -hmm. had his head turned in a completely different direction. Mm -hmm. He, oh, by the way, yeah, we're really sorry that uh, Rabin was killed and all, but here I'm taking mm -hmm. the power without mm -hmm. anybody noticing to cancel the laws mm -hmm. of the exactly. Knesset. And he did it, by the way, in a very, you know, economical uh, issue, not something, you know, in the main uh, issue of the public constitutional so issues, having but, stolen this power yes. and by the way he didn't implement it in the first he just said we just have took the power. the power and he said i'm not using it here but i have the power it's just and then yes tactics. he built it very very you know stage by stage step by step and what we are doing here is just to bring it back israel, a was, bit. israel was a democracy since 1948 to uh, 1920 uh, 92 and when uh, he started America, this. you mentioned the American organization, they should look on themselves. I mean, how a judicial system worked in the United States. Who uh, appoint the attorney general in every state in the, in the, in, Union, in the, yeah. in the U.S.? Mm -hmm. Who put the Supreme, uh, Supreme Court judges in every state and in the federal uh, uh, Supreme Court? So we're talking about... Uh, so you the, think that, because this, this law basically that, that's proposed would agree after the fact mm. to his theft, but yes. say under certain circumstances when we have an absolute majority of 61, that is, it can't just be, you know, a simple majority. It has to be an absolute majority mm -hmm. of 61 out mm -hmm. of 120 MKs. Yes. If we can get together the 61 seat majority, so we can override the override. Of we the, can of the bring court. back the law that yes. you just, yes. You yes. just I don't think, I think we are, uh, you know, we're 75 years old. Nothing happened. We had an accident. A thief, uh, uh, a theft. as you said, a theft. Yes, Grand exactly. theft. Uh, yes, yes, uh, yes, Government. Yes. yes, yes, as the you know the judge, uh, the American judge uh, Posner, right, Richard called him Posner. the the a, a judge, a judgeical uh, pirate. He said uh, about our a, own pi Barack. a pirate. Pirate. Yeah. pirate he, he's pirate. my cousin, you know. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, Richard, <laughs> Richard Posner. Yeah. Okay, so. Uh, so that's what it was. Mm -hmm. I mean, a judicial uh, pirate. That, that what uh, judicial the ju yeah. judicial pirate. Yeah, exactly. That, that's the right definition. What we are doing now is to bring it a bit. I think that we should make, uh, a, you know, a law of separation of authorities from the beginning, from scratch. I mean, okay, we need to define, as in every democracy, what a judge can be involved, what not, in what way. That's what we should do. I think that maybe a really in. Uh, see it as a sees it as, as a tactical step in order that the Supreme Court will not 
uh, uh, you know, cancel the the the, laws the, the that law itself. So right. he said, okay, first of all, we can override the Supreme Court. Then that's why I think he called it the first stage of the reform. So I I hope and I suppose that there will be more. And uh, as you said, I may be in the Knesset, so I'm definitely going to put on. Oh, the you're table definitely going to be in the Knesset. Yeah. So I, I, <laughs> I, I let's say I think so. So I I I will put on the Knesset table. I did it already, by the way, in the in the several months that I was there, uh, um, a set of, of uh, legislations that's supposed to uh, actually take further this reform and uh, and make it. As I said, we need to make a separations of authorities in Israel. We need to. Uh, uh, you talked about the Attorney General that there is no legislation in Israel, no one legislation that defined what are his authorities, what he can do, what he can. There is no. He just took we the now have this stories. terrible situation. It's, it, I mean, all of this is crazy, like through the looking glass, Alice in Wonderland, nuts, mm -hmm. right? Where you have an attorney general now, Gali Miara Baharav, yeah. who was appointed by Giron, Giron Sar, the last uh, mm -hmm. uh, ju justice minister, and mm -hmm. she allowed the Bennett uh, Lapid Gantz government mm -hmm. to write, run roughshod over Israeli law on a whole host of issues. And she was just mm -hmm. out to lunch. Mm -hmm. And all the good governance uh, uh, organizations that are quick to petition the Supreme Court with every you know, alleged uh, infraction by a right-wing government, they all just took a nap for a year and a half. <laughs> and they just woke up, nap. right? They're yes. all, they were all in deep sleep. Rip Van, mm -hmm. Rip Van Winkle, you know, Chonia mm -hmm. Magal. Mm -hmm. They wake up. And here they are, and they're all petitioning wildly and gesticulating. Mm -hmm. And Gali Barav says, "Oh, uh, you know, you're this is illegal. You can't have this. You can't have your government. Arya Derry, the head of the Shas party, can't serve in the government. All of these things." And and um, I think it was a very good course for us. Very good course. This uh, year that year and, and a half. half. Yes, very good course. First of all, we see that you know they when they want to be uh, there is elastic. Right. You said elastic, yeah, there's an elastic way of uh, gemishut, yes, right, I mean, right, right. elastic uh, way of thinking, it's not forbidden, the, pr the attorney judge is forbidden, no, from time to time he can say this, and they always we see the legislation and the law perspective can be this way and that way, and the attorney general, yep, yeah, oh, this is absurd, for example, the fact that the attorney general, I'm talking about representative, to be the government of Israel, want to be representative by a lawyer in the court, and he said, no, you can't. You can. right, this was under Mandelblit, right? This was under Mandelblit. So this this time the uh, her, uh, her honor, yeah, her honor, <laughs> yes. So she uh, uh, agreed that the uh, Netanyahu or Derry will have uh, his own lawyer. But the fact that they allow themselves to say, you know, to every murder in Israel, part of the you know, if uh, uh, to have a the, the, the fine uh, right procedure, to an attorney, as we say, yes, exactly. So we said you have you can have uh, uh, a lawyer from the public uh, defender's uh, office or defense, your own, yes. whoever you want. Or your own. But the public in Israel, the people of Israel, they will not have a lawyer. Why? Because I decided. I'm the attorney. It's, wait, uh, it's wait, wait, wait. Let me just let me just back up a second. So I don't know if if we've mentioned this to you. If you read it in uh, in JNS, I'm sure. But uh, Gali Barav, uh, the attorney general appointed by Saar, who has been trying to undermine this government since before it was even established, decided that she, she had this very original imaginary interpretation of the statute and where she said that uh, Shah's uh, party leader, Arya Derry, is barred from serving as a minister in the government. Now, um, I'm not going to bore you with all the legal stuff. You can look it up. But it, there's no basis in Israeli law for her claim at all. But she said, no, uh, according to my reading of the law, um, he can't serve as a gover uh, in the government. He's the head of the Shas party, over 400,000 yeah. yes, Israelis. Caroline, for, let's see, Caroline. No, but wait, but wait. So then the government said, well, we don't care. Um, and immediately all the good governance people petitioned the court and said, mm -hmm. how can he possibly serve? And then uh, the attorney general said, well, I can't represent the government in this, you know, because I think that they're terribly wrong and they're they're acting unreasonably in the extreme by allowing the head of the one of the coalition partner to serve as a as a government in in, in the in the uh, as a government minister, and um, so under the last uh, attorney general Abichai Mandelblit, uh, the response was, "And you're not allowed to an attorney. You can't hire somebody else to do that." So she was very nice. She said, "Well, I don't support this Exception. position, but I'll let somebody else present yes, it." Yes, but but uh, and I'm saying again, never mind what's her. Let's say that there but is. But it's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. But let's say that there is. 
you can look on the law and you can have the, the, the orientation of Galibera. But she itself said, she herself said that in her office, there were different opinions. I mean, <laughs> so it's not, uh, you know, black and white. It's not uh, Serta de Brot now, no. So, I mean, there are different opinions. So why the state cannot represent the, the, the Prime Minister of Israel? There are some people that think that it's reasonable. One way. And, and some that it's not reasonable. Oh, which so why gets us to the, which because gets this to cup of coffee that you the, you drank this, uh, you know, this morning, the, the, the specific, this, uh, so that became undemocracy way of thinking. And, uh, and that's one of the things that we oh, And then the next change. one that we have to move to from there is reasonableness, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. So uh, Yuri of Levine's, I guess, we're up to four. His fourth mm -hmm. reform is to cancel the reasonableness cause that the uh, Supreme Court can use in order and to cancel. And the Attorney General, right? Yes, yes. And also, and also to cancel not only, uh, uh, I mean... Uh, so wait, to, what's a reasonableness mm, clause? Mm -hmm. let's, let's discuss that a little bit. What does that mean, reasonable, mm -hmm. right? Okay. My, 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 uh, my younger son think it's reasonable for him to be on his cell phone playing games for 20 <laughs> hours a day, right? Okay. And from his perspective, that's entirely reasonable. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I have a different perspective, right? Mm -hmm. um, now, since I'm his mother, I get to tell him that I don't care about what he considers mm -hmm. reasonable. I'm mm -hmm. taking away his phone. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, th this is a concept in Israeli law, right? Mm -hmm. So explain a little bit. Again, so uh, we're talking about, you know, there is in Israel when uh, in democracies, in democracy, in democratic states, when the Supreme Court want to cancel a decision of one of uh, the authorities in Israel, I'm not talking about legislation in the Knesset, I'm talking about, uh, you know, policies, a, a policies, decisions. Yes, exactly. So if the procedure has been done without authority or has been, you mean legal authority, done, I guess, without legal authority, or it's been done in a way that, you know, it's in contrast with an, a, a specific laws. So mm -hmm. this is exactly the job, the role of the judge to see the case, to see the law, and to see if it's, it's uh, you know, not coming together, it's something wrong. But uh, they, to, to put the reasonableness uh, uh, as the, you know, it's, it's, it's something very, very... It's a cause. They said, just to get this clear, so reasonableness is, an, is a justification that the lawyers in the Supreme Court and in the Attorney General's office have adopted as a means to strike down lawful government uh, uh, policies. So they say, from our perspective, or decisions, from our perspective, it's unreasonable. And if it's unreasonable, then it doesn't stand. And mm -hmm. we're going to cancel this government policy, not based on any legal problem with that policy, but because we say that it mm -hmm. is and the, absurd, and the absurd come that when you see that, let's take, for example, the, the law, it's not a law, it's like a, a takana. It's, a, it's an amendment. Yes, an amendment. So that uh, uh, the, our defense, the uh, minister of defense uh, said that murders house will be destroyed. Yes. Right. By the way, it's not a punish. This is a takana. It's more like, it's like a... I forgot the. It's a statute mm. under administrative law, exactly. so that it's not. It's not a. It's not a legislation. legislation. Of the Knesset, it's a, it's administrative law in Israel, which is what we use in Judea and Samaria, for instance. Yes, and uh, and uh, all of the offices and and uh, let's talk about this uh, takana of uh, uh, destroying houses of murders. It's not a punish. Punish it's in the law. It's act of it's the a government in measure. order to yes, in order to to to, to prevent the you know the next murder. We're not punishing those uh, his Regulation kids. is the word. It's a regulation. Regulation. That's okay. the word, okay. yeah. Okay, so okay. no, it's a regulation. So this regulation uh, 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 is in order to prevent the next murder. And so you see that in the same Supreme Court, by the way, many times that this uh, uh, kind of uh, regulation is com uh, comes, so they said they approve it. He said, okay, you know, because the murders, families are applied to the Supreme Court, said we are eight, uh, you know, we have no father. We have no You're talking about the destruction of terrorists' homes. So yes. it's, an, it's, a, it's a punitive measure that is part of an overall counterterrorism doctrine, which is what you want to remove the impetus for, um, for, uh, committing acts of terrorism by showing that not only will the terrorist suffer, but his family will yes, as well. So yes. you destroy the This house. is the payment. This right. is the, the, the... And then... Uh, and by the way, in the uh, committee, in the Knesset committee of the... 
of uh, foreign affairs and, and security more than one time. We had the reports that the, there is a great impact. Right. It, it's very, we keep using it because it works. It works, exactly. Right. And if we come back to the, to the uh, reasonable uh, uh, cause, so in the same Supreme Court, you can see that three, four uh, judges are sitting in this type of cases and they said, okay, let this try. And not a long time ago, the, the, the murder, the how the murder, uh, uh, the house of the murder of uh, Amit Benigal, mm -hmm. which dropped, by the way, from the house, mm -hmm. dropped a stone and, and killed right, him. So he was a he was an IDF uh, sergeant who was mm -hmm. in um, in the midst of a counterterror operation. This was in, in Nablus, Arab village, right? Yes, near Nablus. New, yes. Near Nablus, uh, Shrem, and they took a marble countertop like, you know, that you have in your kitchen, mm -hmm. and they threw it from the roof onto his head, crushed his skull, and killed him. And killed and him, And exactly. from their home. They did this from their home, and so the defense minister issued an order to destroy the mm -hmm. home. Yes, right? exactly. By the way, in the regular places, in this type of case, when you use, I mean, the house was the tool right. that they, he used right. to, to kill, it's, it's another issue. But anyway, he, in order to this regulation, he decided to... to to destroy the house, and he, uh, of course, the, the organization, the human rights organization that petitioned uh, the court. Yeah, petitioned the court, and the court, two judges, many mazuz, and I think uh, Kara, the, the other one, decided that it's not reasonable to destroy the house. I mean, so you can see, and the third one, I don't know, remember it was Vilna or some of the other, the, the third uh, judges decided, oh, it's reasonable. So what's reasonable? What's reasonable? They He's, can't even decide among themselves. In themselves. And of course they can decide it because, you know, it's... It's, uh, it's completely arbitrary. It's completely arbitrary, exactly. So this, this type of way to take decisions, uh, uh, the final, the bottom line is that they're doing what they want and not what the public, the freedom right, of the public... Right, Ma because Mazoz and, uh, and Kaboob, who was? Kaboob. No, Ka I think it was... Uh, uh, what's his name? Kara. Anyway, anyway, these two yeah. justices are known for being radical leftists, yes. and they and and amazingly, right? They make their basis, they make their judicial decisions on the basis of their exactly. worldview. Exactly, and the problem, but the problem is they're not making on the base of the of the, their leftist opinion. The problem is they're making on the base of their opinion, whatever they are. Right? Who cares? I mean, they not needed no to do it according to the law. Right. And the law said. So the fourth or fifth uh, uh, reform reforms. that we're talking about is that the abolition of reasonableness as as a justification for ruling. Yes. For right. Ruling. Yes. For so uh, whether you're the attorney general or the court, or just for the court. No, that's for, that's for the court. For the attorney general, it's it's another thing. I think that it was not in the first stage of Levin, but right. it will be. And that also brings to us to another issue, which is standing, right? Who gets standing before the court? In the United States, of course, to have standing right. to petition the Supreme Court, you actually have to be a party to a dispute. It has to yes. actually harm you. And here mm -hmm. we have this spate of European-funded fun, uh, mm -hmm. uh, radical anti-Israel organizations that present themselves as human yes. rights organizations. And they petition the Supreme yeah. Court, and they have no injury, they have nothing, and they they do and it. The climax was Ukraine, Ukraine, I mean, Ukraine. And the, the climax of of, uh, of expanding of the the, the standing uh, uh, right. The government in the, of the, the, Ukraine. The petition. government of Ukraine uh, was a oh, petition right. applied, uh, applied to the Supreme Court regarding to Ayelet Shaked decision that uh, that limited the, the, the number of limited Ukrainians the, the who the people could come that come that coming as a tourist, but are not actually tourists. So they said, "I know who is tourist, is not." And by the way, by the law, it's her. Uh, it's her uh, right. It's her right. But uh, but let's leave that content now. They gave the the lawyer standard. It's, it's right in his uh, in his petition. They said. Uh, I am the representative of Ukraine. Oh, what, what's, what's going on? I mean, the Ukraine. So the Ukrainian the government, government petitioned, actually, the, yes, petitioned so, the Supreme Court mm -hmm. against the immigration policy yeah. set by the Minister of, of the Interior, yeah, yeah, which, so, is, which, which makes the Bagats, which makes the Supreme Court, you know, he's international. Yeah, Lord right. It's Hague. the Hague. It's the Hague. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, Right, that's, so that that's that's, so, a, that's the standing. So, so this is uh, that didn't enter into yeah. the first stage. Uh, I don't I think, think he mentioned it. I don't standing. think he mentioned it. But again, all those steps are in order to fix, in order to build, in order to repair what was it, broken. It's important to say it because of the campaign. It's important that our audience that see us, see us now, 
will understand that we in the Likud, in Netanyahu's government, want to repair, to fix the problems in the Israel democracy as in the 25, 30 years. That were caused by yes, yes. Aaron Barak and, and the his... main, the main achievement of the modern time is in danger in Israel. I mean, the main achievement is the liberty. The main achievement is the fact that every we are uh, uh, doing what we decide. Yes, what the, 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 the factor, the real factor that set the rules and set the policy are the, uh, uh, the votes in the ballots and not the, the, the you know, the, the sword or the power of the king. No, no, this is, no, that's and, what and you're that's, don't that's lose another, this achievement. I, I think actually, you know, we've gone through I and mean, we might have forgotten one, I can't remember, but I think, I think what, what comes off very clearly is that this has to just be stage one so that not only are these reforms not anti-democratic they're not enough they're insufficient like mm -hmm. we need stage two because we haven't dealt with the standing well, we haven't dealt with the attorney general's powers we haven't dealt with uh the committee for uh, for senior appointments that's led by a supreme court justice no. and we haven't talked about one other thing which is uh, what i wanted to move to for a second which was the Central Elections Commission in mm. Israel, which is controlled by the Supreme Court, right? Because mm. they have a rotating chosen by the Supreme Court president, the chairman, yes. uh, yeah. the chairman of the the of, of the, the electing uh, of the committee. Central Election Commission, Central Commission is chosen by the Supreme Court mm. president, and it's a Supreme Court justice. Mm. And you yourself were supposed to go into the Knesset in 2019, <laughs> yes. right? In as a regular Likud MK, mm. because the Likud won 36 mm. uh, seats in that in, in that election. And uh, Justice Meltzer, who was the rotating chairman, decided right. not to count a bunch of ballots, and uh, mm. and so he decided, just on the basis of effectively very little, it would seem that mm. no, indeed, the the Likud only had thirty five seats, mm. and you were kept out of the, mm. and then you waged this very long battle to try mm. to get some justice here. So. Talk about what Meltzer did as the Supreme mm -hmm. Court Justice, who was the head of the. Yeah. It's supposed to be just a, an administrative position, but it, it yes, really yes. isn't. Yes. Right? First of all, the position itself is administrative. It's not uh, uh, when they appoint him; is they're not appointing him as a judge. They're appointing him as an administrative. Which uh, raises a question: but Then why a why judge? Yes. No, <laughs> exactly. So there is a judicial type of decision, but it's act, it's definitely not supposed to be a judge. <laughs> Uh, not as it is today anyway. Meltzer has had a, a small problem. He didn't know how to count Likud votes. Oh. Notes, you know. That's notes. it. Macha, that's, that's yeah, the problem. ballots. Yeah. Uh, the ballots. Like it. So, so uh, that's what his problem. I mean, he used all the tricks of a uh, judicial trick, I mean, in the, in the commit, and he allowed to them to, to, to open specific ballots and not and other ballots that I said here that you have votes of the Likud, please open these ballots, let's count and recount it or something. I said, no, 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 this one, no, this one, yes, this type of, uh, and then uh, I went to the, to the judge in Jerusalem, but the problem, this is the- uh, The district judge. District judge, exactly. And it's very problematic for- Who, is, sub who is subordinate to the Supreme Court. Exactly, that's the problem. So they need to go against uh, decisions of the Supreme Court judge. It's, uh, Another reason that there very... shouldn't be a judge in the head of the exactly. Central Election exactly. Commission. Exactly, this is a big lacon in the a big problem in the, in the current law. And I also, this one of the legislations that I, I intend to, to, to change. And it's all the same issue. As you see it, we have a problem in Israel that few people take the decisions uh, instead of the public, instead of the people, uh, without And instead every... of people who are qualified to make them. Exactly, exactly. So well, that's why we are here. Uh, I think we need to, you know, to see it very natural. We have in Israel, we are, as I said before, we are 75 years old, Israel. It's uh, it's okay. I mean, we are young in terms of uh, not that young. No, no, not in, not in parallel to the other states. I mean, yeah, but other, we're we're young well, and we're we're, we're old but, enough to know better. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but it happens. It happens. Yeah. Well, yeah. it happens for states that were many years we have. You know, we dealt with many security problems. We still do. So mm -hmm. I mean, uh, we have many other problems, and we didn't take if we were. Uh, uh, made this interview 15 years ago, and we were talking about uh, judicial uh, activism. Said, uh, what you're talking about? I mean, people. Oh, I don't know. I've been writing about it for 20 years. 20 but, years. But, okay. Uh, okay. But okay. Okay. But still, I, still I was so alone. Though, you were, uh, you know, <laughs> exceptional. But in general, uh, let's say today, yeah. many people, when yeah. Aaron Barak in his interview said, "Ah, oh, you're doing the end of democracy," and they said, "Hey, come on, don't, don't teach us about democracy." I mean, there are enough. 
uh, uh, the knowledge and the public discourse has the you know the alternative view that we don't need. I, well, mean, I think that if you look at the last elections, the main thing that they were about more than it's anything else system. was judicial reform. So, okay. I mean, you know, when I, I'm not joking, I, I have been writing about this issue for over 20 mm -hmm. years. And the thing is, is that when I was writing about it in the Hebrew media, there was nobody else writing about exactly. it, to the best of my knowledge. Um, and, and today's more. And today, more. and today, I don't have to write about it anymore mm -hmm. because so many people are writing about it, and so many people are talking about it. And obviously, uh, Netanyahu's uh, criminal trial, which again, just got another uh, nail in its coffin mm -hmm. yesterday, mm -hmm. by what an incredible miscarriage of justice that has been in pr pr prosecutorial uh, uh, malfeasance I and mean, criminal malfeasance, I would mm -hmm. argue. Uh, on the part of uh, Liad ben -Ari and her colleagues. So mm -hmm. when you look at that, it obvious, it became so glaringly obvious. It's like, it wasn't that, you know, somebody stumbled over a dead body, you know, by the side of the road. The, the dead body is sitting there right in the middle of the table mm -hmm. and everybody's been trying to ignore it for a long time. But, you know, at a certain point, it just starts smelling, mm -hmm. you know, and that's really what the, it was like the, a smelly cadaver was 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 Neten Netanyahu's trial. It exactly. But what do, you, what, what do you have just said? I mean, the fact that Carolyn Glick 20 years ago wrote about it and she was, uh, you know, one or two voices that, uh, right. that put it on the table. And today you, you said you don't need right. to write about it. This is the change. I mean, right. the change, the change. In, the, in the in the public opinion this is the base, by the way, in every democracy. This is the base of policy change. I mean, now we have the, the authority, we have the, the backing of the public to do these reforms and all the, you know, the crime. The, the, so the, we have about 10 minutes to go, and yes. I just want to sort of finish this with kind of a, 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 a round of sort of speeding through things. I mean, when you think about it, you know, I, I'm doing a lot of thinking these days on delegitimization of Israel abroad mm -hmm. and how are we going to fight it because anti-Semitism has gotten to such a horrible level in the mm -hmm. West, in the United States, in Britain, in Europe. Um, I, I mean, I just read this thing yesterday that uh, some guy drove his car. He was drunk. Everybody's drunk these days. Everybody who does an anti-Semitic crime in the United States, their defense was that they were drunk at the time. So this guy mm -hmm. drove his car into... Uh, a synagogue, I think it was a Chabad synagogue in Los Angeles. Um, but he was mm -hmm. drunk, so you know mm -hmm. it was a mistake. But um, and and you and you have uh, everybody coming to their defense and making making excuses. He was drunk. He didn't mean to. I mean, he could just have easily have driven it into you know a dog park. Like he had no idea what he was doing. Not true. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody's by accident committing these atrocities. Or on Friday night in Brooklyn and Crown Heights. This car, you know, accidentally accelerated when he drove into a, into a Jewish guy crossing the street, a Chabadnik, um, uh, and he critically wounded him. And and so you look at you look at that, and then you look at the delegitimization. But in a way, it really does start here. It's I wouldn't say it starts here. It, there's an enormous amount of anti-Semitism abroad from the left, from the mm -hmm. right, from from Islamic sources, from black sources, from whomever. But there's like a meeting point because when you see the Israeli media and leftist political leaders and activists demonizing this government and saying it's fascist and fanatical and they're working with one another or like they, they, you have this cross germination of demonization and then you coming into the Knesset you're looking at the situation where you have a propaganda war at home, propaganda war abroad, they meet, and together they propose to paralyze this Knesset and this government. How will you, how should this government look at this? Where do you even start? It seems like it's just coming at us from 360 degrees, you know. We need to do two activities, mm -hmm. negative and positive. Negative, of course, all those powers, uh, by the way, many of them, uh, on behalf of the states, I mean, it's a uh, state money from European uh, Union mm -hmm. uh, and uh, from European countries. So, you know, that several kinds funding of the delegitimization, yeah, fighting the delegitimization organizations and uh, a state should not uh, take it as uh, something that we need to accept it. We don't we don't have to accept it. I mean, right. you, you, you can make you can fight a country in you know, by tanks and by uh, soft uh, organizations, soft organizations that, uh, so if you fund them, uh, not only it should be on the table and to be published as in, in the current Israeli, no, you, we can make many 
uh, and that's uh, also limits. new. That's from 2017. Yeah, right, or right. And we need to make a lot of limits and to to make it very clear to different countries that we are not accepting uh, their involvement in our internal issues, not uh, by uh, you know uh, uh, physical uh, instruments and not by organizations and and propaganda. And uh, that's one thing. But besides the limitations that we need to do. Uh, a court on foreign subversion uh, to, to those mm -hmm. that we need to make also a positive uh, act and this is the very this is I see all those delegitimation project as a challenge for Israel to put her real vision and real characters uh, to the old nations I mean we are a civilizations the Israel state present the Hebrew civilizations and uh, we have what to say. Right. I mean, Israel is a very unique state in way of, you know, the, the relations between power and morality, between tradition and uh, modern uh, modernity. And uh, in all those issues, uh, Israel is a real light to the nations. And I, I'm saying it because, you know, when I was in different places in the world, many, India, uh, China, Western states, say, looking on Israel, how it became in 75 years such a a flourish and uh, prosperous uh, country, and we have we have uh, uh, we have something to say about it. I mean, I will not open it in the, in the last two minutes of the of this interview. But Israel has to put in the front its values, mm -hmm. its traditional values, its current uh, 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 society. Uh, so uh, just one more question, and then I, I kind of want to I want to riff back on what you were mm. saying. But and it, and it goes to this: you're an interesting um, figure, I think, in Israeli political life because you're in the Likud, you're a member of Likud Central Committee. Mm -hmm. You you run for the Knesset a number of times. You got in in twenty. You're uh, going to be getting in uh, later this week, probably mm -hmm. or maximum next week uh, for a full term, and yet. Your whole maturation process was in the halls of religious Zionism. You spent 10 years at Merkaz Arab, mm -hmm. which is the flagship yeshiva for religious Zionism under the, the doctrines, the, the religious teachings of, of the Rav Cook. Mm -hmm. um, so how is it, why aren't you with Smotrich, who I think also uh, studied at uh, Merkaz Arab, and you know, he's the head of the religious Zionism party. How do you see um, what makes you who you are? What is it? You know, the, we talked about reforms here. So there was the, the big, the great reform of the Jewish people was when we moved from communities to a nation. Mm -hmm. So it's about time also in the Israeli population, the Israeli society to make this move. I mean, I'm an Israeli. I'm a Jew. I'm mm -hmm. an Israeli. So I don't uh, consider myself, I'm not defining myself as uh, to, to, to belong to a specific community. Mm -hmm. I'm here. We're in, we're in a process. Okay. Every group, every uh, community brings to the Israeli table, to the Jewish table, by the way, uh, uh, its way of thinking. And, uh, and uh, we are here. I'm a part of this table. I never thought myself to be, uh, you know, in a specific sector. That's why I mean the Likud, mm -hmm. the Likud presents the Jewish people. I mean, the Likud presents the, it's a microcosmos of the Israeli society. And uh, the, the, the major value of the Likud is the national, that we are a liberal national party. Mm -hmm. Means these are our major values that we have just mentioned in this conversation. I mean, the liberal uh, uh, value, we want a liberal state, uh, and uh, that the people will be the sovereign, that the citizens will be the sovereign, and we want a national state. I mean, Israel is a national state, and it presents, uh, it's, it's actually the Jewish state, belongs to the Jewish people, all of you, by the way. And, uh, and uh, that is, the, by the way, the, this is the common uh, value right. in the Likud, I mean, because the, there are many different, you know, in many issues in the Likud, uh, you know, we are, there are disagreements in many different issues, economics, but the common is the uh, loyalty to Israel and the, Jewish uh, to, uh, as the Jewish state, yes. And that's, the, and that's why I'm in the Likud. I mean, this is the, the, the and I think in general also Smotrich and other people should be in the, you know, we are in the national um, 
פארט, או נשיונל, אצלנו קוראים לזה המחנה הלאומי, אני מבין את זה. כן, נשיונל סקאפ. נשיונל סקאפ, בגלל זה. אז זה מהי דפיניציה שלי, ואני חושב שהרבה מהישראלים, טרדישיונל ישראלים, ליברל ישראלים, רואים את עצמם כפרט של הליכוד פארטי, וזה למה אני פה. Well, I think it's great, and, and I just wanted to make a, one final comment on what Amit was talking about when he talks about the Jewish civilization. I think this is a core, I think this is a core point, and I started developing it in my writing over the past couple of years, and I'd really like the opportunity to develop it more with you in a, in a subsequent time when, when we can meet and you're not, you know, totally overtaken by events as a, as a, as a lawmaker, but You know, one of the things that I find is that we're seeing, I don't want to call it the collapse, but it certainly looks like the collapse of the West, of Western civilization, mm -hmm. where you see country after country in Europe and the United States and Australia and others who just seem to be having a nervous breakdown in terms of not knowing how, whether they're allowed to even respect their past, whether they're allowed to learn their history, what, what lessons they're supposed to take from, take from their history, what lessons they're mm -hmm. supposed to learn, or, you know, what history they're supposed to even teach from, the, from Britain, from France, from, from all of these countries, from the United States with the 1619 Project and so on. And it, it seems to me that at this moment in our history of the Jewish people, we have to remember that we're not inherently part of Western civilization. I mean, Western civilization is based very much, has taken a lot from Greek civilization for, for, and, and Roman civilization and from Jewish civilization. Mm -hmm. But we, pre, we preceded, we're before the, the West, and we keep, we've, we've forgotten that over the past several hundred years. But I think one of the most exciting things that we can look forward to in the in the years and and decades to come in israel is really the reformation of our very unique compact little because we're little people but we are a self-standing civilization and we should remember that because it's, only, we're remember everything we, i think we have today and this is a new thing to say i mean there is today and not only we're presenting the ancient uh, nation of israel mm -hmm. even today israel has a unique voice mm -hmm. and I think that uh, uh, we should by the way every country you know the Geta institution in German mm -hmm. and the British uh, consul and alliance in France and uh, France and so so forth I mean every have country unique. have a, a, it's called a, you know a, an uh, export cultural institution mm -hmm. and we need also to have such uh, an institution I mean we Uh, uh, we, we have a, a, a have unique contribution, yes, and we need to share it. And uh, by the way, we need to share the with Abraham, Jews. We need yeah. to share with Jews. Okay, <laughs> you're right. But also with not, and the Abraham Accords, by the mm -hmm. way, the the last Abraham Accords in the Middle East is also a good opportunity. It's not. It's a unique. Uh, uh, you know, the, the Accord said in the, I think the the sixth branch there, both nations will develop. Uh, uh, you know, relationships. In light of their uh, ancient uh, forefather Abraham, uh, in, his, in the spirit of Abraham, and very important words. I mean, it's the first real peace agreement that we have in, in the Arab world and uh, with the Arab world, and and uh, and this is a very good point to start with. A, a, you know, a cultural uh, conversation that put Abraham values. On the international, in the, uh, in, the you know, in, in the in the discourse, in the international discourse. Well, very I important. think I've enjoyed this discourse very okay. much. <laughs> I appreciate it. If you good. survived my English and you survived my English, yeah. so it's okay. But it will be improved. No, I'm, well, I mean, don't no. don't 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 commit yourself to anything. You're not <laughs> okay. going to be able to ah, live no, up no, to. I'm, We're tired of, of, of politicians no, promising no, us and failing to deliver. So if you're going to get better English, then okay. you can say it. All right, we'll we'll talk about it after the fact. Okay. In the meantime, it was fine. I appreciate Thank it. You. And guys, I look forward to talking to you again next week for another episode of the Carolyn Glick Show. Who knows? We'll be here next. Take care. Bye bye.